Recreation Committee meeting, uh, August 14th. Now I'm coming to order. Everyone is present. Ms. Um, Fondo, can you do the invocation? I'll be glad to. Father God, we come before you throne tonight and we offer thanksgiving and praise and honor for all the many blessings that we have here in Ascension and in these United States of America. And Father, tonight we bring to mind this heat wave and the people, Father God, that are out of electricity and that are sweltering, the, the elderly and those that are sick. We ask for a special blessing upon them tonight. We ask for a complete presence of your spirit in this parish and thank you for all those, whether they're volunteers or elected, Father, who serve the people of Ascension Parish. And Father, tonight we pray for our soldiers that are abroad keeping this country free while doing the task of freeing others. We ask for their safety and their quick return home to their family and their loved ones. And as always, Father God, we thank you that you secure our borders and our gates with your glory. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, I have an email that got came in and I opened it up right before I came here. Mr. Brad Thompson of the ABA would like to speak on behalf of the BA, ABA and I would like to put him under um, with a uh, recreation update after that. Put him before Most the Motion making that item D. Second. second. Item 4D, uh, Mr. Chairman. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. 4D. Okay. All right. Anyone that want to make any comment, period, or anything they can sign up, um, please do on that. All right. Um, have one more item that I, um, I have on there. I see Mr. Mark Peters. He also wanted to be on the new business. I put that on the new business. He wanted to give an update of his organization. Motion. Second. Okay. All in favor that Mark Peter be put on new business. Aye. Aye. All right. Okay. Now, moving along. Um, recreation update by Director uh, Sheriff Kenchy. Thank you. Good evening, members of the Recreation Committee and uh, board members. Uh, apart from general upkeep and maintenance of parks, um, I am down in my department now by two people, uh, four mowers in the shop with four weeks of rain, so we are catching up on our grass cutting. Um, I gave each of you the master plan that was uh, passed, I think, in 93, and I also gave you the analysis from the recreation um, that we did on that particular master plan. And as you know, SJB is doing an assessment of our parks um, as part of a grant through Senator Vitter's office. So they've been taking pictures and assessing our parks. At the request of Councilman Joseph, I invited Bill Palmer down. He came and visited with us last Tuesday. Um, we, in turn, will be going to Breck next week. Any and all who would like to go are more than welcome to go, and uh, Breck has opened up their offices. Um, he doesn't really want to make a report, um, and when we sit down and talk, you'll see why. Um, question? Everybody's trying to get to Breck. I have a question first and then the sheriff. Sure. That's Tuesday next week? Um, I don't know. I can call you with that. He came Tuesday of last week here. Uh -huh. 
and we can set up a meeting and for we, him. Yes, and I would really like it if some of you would go um, if you have those days off, and it will be during the day. So uh, I'll email all of you at that date, and if you'd like to go, uh, we can set something up. Okay. Ms. Cheryl Fontenot? I, I'm interested in the two people and the four mowers and the grass cutting. Uh, what have you done out there at Jackie Robinson this summer? Is is has it? We've cut trees. We've been cutting trees off the back fence. Um, as I said, we've had four weeks of rain. Uh, we cut it. We are have spent a great deal of time at Darrow, and we're trying to get to each park with all of our guys to do all of the really serious grooming that needs to be done. But we are also answering calls and going into other districts where people feel like they have needs that need to be addressed. I guess my concern is uh, two Saturdays ago or Saturday before last, I went out there to uh, Jackie Robinson for a back to school give get, giveaway and Jerry Savoy and myself were both there and I had my camera with me and Jerry and I made sure we took pictures because we were appalled. There was 25, at least 25, 20 to 25 children on the playground, on the playground equipment that was rocks, but the grass was this high. And they were playing it, you know, they were sliding down the slides and swinging on the Could swings. Could you send me stuff. those pictures as well? Uh, I have them and I certainly will. Thank you. Ms. Fondo, I didn't want to bring that up, but since you opened the door on that, you need to review all parks because if you go to um, Perryville Park playground area for the kids, they do have grass inside. The, the, I ride those park weekly, Miss. Uh, what okay. you call? Uh, I, I, I'm just saying. Okay. Uh, I mean, but adult softball calls me every day, and they are delighted with Perryville. So I will pass that along, and I will check. I, I didn't say tomorrow. the baseball field. I will check the park tomorrow. I cut I cut Friday yeah. with the weed eater. If I have to, I'll go out and cut it again myself. But uh, those areas where the kids play at, they are they have weeds growing inside of them. And Perryville, um, the other park, uh, Darrow, they also have it. Um, now, Darrow, you should see a lot of improvement because we spent all last week over there doing a lot of stuff at Darrow. Well, I haven't at the been there that last week. I haven't been... The, this weekend, but about two weeks ago, I was in that area, and I reviewed it. Okay, yeah, we are so. trying to get to all districts, and we know it's an election year, and we're trying to get to all those districts. But as I said, we are always trying to get more people. Any okay. more questions about that, or may I continue? Yeah, go ahead, Chair. Yeah. Well, I don't think an election year has anything to do about it. You know, I mean, these are the things that if we're not if we're not conscious of this round of year, we don't even yes, need to be I, elected. I agree. I'm just saying that we are getting calls and we are trying to get in all 11 districts, so we are running full throttle with our guys. Well, this this particular park that I'm talking about is not in my district, and so I'm not going to get any votes uh, from uh, bringing it up. But when I asked about because you could see that the grass had been freshly mowed but the, the park ground itself, the playground itself, is where the weeds were in the rocks. It's supposed to be like rocks and stuff. There shouldn't be anything there. And when I asked about it, you know, and I, because I was trying to find out, well, why did we send people out there to cut the grass and then there was nobody to do, like you said, the finishing touches. And I was told that the, 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 uh, the citizens themselves cut the grass the day before, which is why they didn't do any of the trim work, that the, mow, the actual mowing, you know, had been done, and I can't tell you who I talked to. There was a bunch of people out there, really people I didn't know, and I was just, you know, just asking questions. And Jerry might be able to answer. Uh, yeah, I'll answer with, that because he was also out Tavo. there. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, uh, Ms. Kenson, I want I want to thank you on the improvements to the Old Grove Center. Thank you, Councilman. And, uh, of course, uh, can you tell me as far as the basketball goes? Uh, yes, we will be out there at 7 tomorrow. We were there today. We just didn't have enough people to affect right. 
Make sure they drink plenty of so hot water. Stephen Hardy <laughs> is sending me some people tomorrow to get okay, those goals thank out. You. Uh, Simply a weight uh, height issue. Right. And um, uh, we just shut it down because we thought that that was just too dangerous for the two men. Right. Make make sure that they take water breaks and they're filling up. And, I mean, it's hot out there, but it, you know, it, it's it's something that I've asked for before, and, and I'm glad we're getting that done. The the center, I appreciate you getting it painted. It looks great from the outside. For an we'll old get the structure. inside when that and program I, is finished. I appreciate the limestone, and I, I know we're going to jump on and do something with the parking rails out front and all. Uh, yeah, that's that's on the schedule board. Okay. Uh, on the Prairieville Park that uh, Mr. Chairman uh, Joseph brought up, um, of course, I know uh, a lot of that out front is, is part of the, uh, it's private, it's part of the old uh, Prairieville Park Association. And we're in negotiation. Yeah, okay, can you give us an update where that's at, where, where, what, you know, where we are and, um, and as well, far as, because you talked about also trying to acquire some additional property, I believe, to... Right on the back by the baseball field, by the baseball there's field. an acre that sits kind of a long acre and I would really like to access that. Give okay. us another acre in that park. Who, who, does that belong to the par, uh, park association, or is that no, belong to an no? No, that's a, an individual who owns that land. Okay. The park in the front is owned by the Ascension Fair Association, right. and, and all the old buildings and all. That's that's right. all. They private. would like very much to keep the old building, right. and I think the building is going to be the point of contention. Um, right. I'm not real sure that it's structurally sound, right. um, but we are still in negotiation with them. They right. do not want to donate the property. Right. So it's not going to be anything that we acquire. Okay. Uh, we can are already cutting the front because it affects the visibility of right. the park. Can you tell me as far as acquisition of the property in the very rear that you're wanting to buy uh, for the, the parish? Negotiating it's, for the parish to yes, purchase. Yes, um, it's going to probably be about thirty-seven nine and for that acre. And thirty-seven thousand nine hundred. Okay. Yeah. And are, do you think we're going to come to a successful conclusion on this? And, and if I can keep that money in my budget without okay. moving it around, okay. I, I hope so. Right. We've been talking okay. on and off for a few months, so I, I just really think it would make a nice addition to that, especially. Okay considering the uh, parking problems that the adults are having at Prairieville. Right, so, okay, uh, that's um, the, uh, okay, last question, and of course it's not on the agenda anywhere, recreation update. Uh, can you tell me where we stand as far as putting additional monies in the budget for the council to consider for the expansion of Oak Grove Community Center? Um, we Dollar are in, amount and where we are? We are in budget, uh, in the budget process now and I have followed the guidelines and increased my budget to what I thought we needed. Um, and so we shall see. Uh, other than that, I can only tell you what I put in there. Right, and what did um, you put in there specifically for, for Oak Grove Center? Uh, well, I, you don't put it for, well, I put it for like upgrades. Right, um, right. So, you know, I put a couple hundred thousand there, a couple hundred thousand in land. Okay. Um, I usually will end up losing the land Okay. Or I end up losing but that. A couple of hundred thousand to expand the Oak right, Grove Center, right, center right, that, right. that actually benefits my district, Miss Fontenot's district. Mr. I mean, anyone can use it in the parish. I mean, it's not just for my district. It's just that the park happens to sit there. No, I've used it as well, and I don't live anywhere near Oak Grove. Yeah, yeah so okay. It, well. it is a utilized building. Okay. Um, yeah, but, so. but you've done what I've asked of you, and it's you, in the budget, so that'll be something for the council right, to and consider. And, and now that's not going to come back through recreation, or is it? that portion of the budget? Um, yeah. I don't really know. All I do is write my budget out and then it will go okay. through the budget okay. process yeah, and we'll pare it down. Excuse me, I still have a full. I, I uh, do I still have a full? Yeah, what you got so that's what I'm saying. The, it, the recreation budget is going to come back through this committee for us to vote on then it goes to the full council for the full council budget. Uh, I, I don't know that I mean, process. Mr. Joseph is saying yes, and I'm new on the recreation. I, I just committee. put I'm it just in, and then and, 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 um, I do my portion. Oh, it'll go to finance. Thank you, Cheryl. Oh. Okay, thank you. Okay, but we once I go through my talks with um, the administration, then I think they either approve or pare it down right, more, and then right. after that. Well, that's a nice little center the up there, and you know we're not going anywhere with it. Uh, you know it, the story behind it, just so the voters will know. If if we were to sell that property off, and so the taxpayers know the money gained from selling that site 
which is worth a lot of money. It would go back to the original donors or the heirs of the donors. Right. And Ascension Parish would lose that. So that's that's the decision that, that I want is to expand the center to make it more user friendly. Well, you know, for I, family I'm, reunions and gatherings and the like, uh, uh, receptions and all. Right. And I don't know if the um, public knows, but also that is an LWCF site. Yeah. So um, with grant can't money move involved. it there. We'd have to move it and build something comparable in the same district. Right. And so we would actually be talking about a lot more money. A exactly. Okay. I just want to clear that up. Thank you. Thank you for the update. Well, while I appreciate your concern about Oak Grove, and I realize that we need to uh, make sure that things are kept up to date. I would really like, Sherry, for you to make a list of things, that we don't just signal out one particular thing that, that needs to be done, because, because while I was at Jackie Robinson, like I said, it's not in my district, and it's close enough, I guess, that some of my people can use it also, but it, it it is in a needed area for people to uh, have recreation. It's been a park that's been there a long time. I can tell you that the bathrooms were deplorable and they need upgrading. Agreed. So, I mean, what, what I'm saying is that we have a lot of maintenance that needs to be done around all of the facilities. And so when we talk about budget money, and, and if there's only a hundred to 200,000, then a absolutely we're gonna have to prioritize. And so that's where I would rather see that if you're going to put something in the budget, that you at least come back to this board and let us know some of the type of things that can be accomplished with that particular dollar figure and then we can make yeah. make some recommendations. Right. And I just have one well, comment. my budget is tied to a sales tax. So my budget will always be about the same. So without the council adding more money or the administration and we cannot submit a budget that is not in balance by ordinance. You can't submit a budget that's in deficit. So um, but but you're right. Southwood has no bathroom. No, not and, Southwood, and it's Jackie Robinson. I know, I'm just, I'm just kind of reiterating oh, right. your point that there, every park needs upgrades. Every park that's out there, including parks that we don't even unlock, that Mr. Lambert has been asking about for two years. So, you know, you're talking about $200,000 easy to bring that park back into compliance, and it is not in compliance. Hillaryville is not in compliance, and there's nothing there. So, you know, that's, at some point, you know, you may, you may need to, as a legislative body, decide to go beyond that sales tax, and you know that's that's a legislative function. But I can tell you that I put in for a, a bathroom at Southwood. I've put in for upgrades for everything, um, but we won't get it on next year's budget either. There's just not going to be enough money to expand when there's barely enough to maintain what we already have. I guess, Cheryl, where I'm going with that is that, you know, we, we, know, uh, we know how many, we, we need to know exactly what places need, what, what it would cost to, to do that, so that we have some choices, where we will also maybe have some choices where we can, we can look for money to do more than what you have in your budget. But without having the figures, you, you understand, we need a plan and, so that and we can increase the budget. Plan, but even without a plan, you just told me, you know you need a bathroom at Southwood, you know you need an upgraded bathroom, an ADA bathroom. At Santa Mar Park, the front bathroom, is, there's absolutely no way that's ADA compliant. Just those three bathrooms there will, will be two, three hundred thousand dollars. So, you know, but, know, but I'm telling I, you, one point two, and you're going to hear it again from baseball. And if softball was here and the adults were here, you're going to hear it again. One point two million dollars is barely enough to maintain. So, I mean, we could go to every park, but I could give you an outside figure. Put five million there, and we'll spend every dime, and we still won't be updated. But, the, but, but we that's are working on we are working on the plan. But you know, when. A master plan is usually something that people pay for. There's a survey that has to go online, an objective survey. Well, we're doing that. If you read the qualitative analysis. But Cheryl, that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about talking a master about a, plan. We're talking we're, about a plan. We're talking, well, we're talking about parks. 
Yes, we're talking. We're talking. We're getting off the subject because Instead we're talking about the parks we already have. If we need to increase the money to maintain the parks we already have, we need to have an amount. You know, uh, not just the, an estimate what it's going to cost two or three hundred. That's not how we do things. We so, need to know that Jackie Robinson's going to take fifty thousand. This is going to take sixty thousand. We need to have something so that when we base it, we can add it to capital outlay with an amount. So, so in order for me to do what you're asking, I need to put out bids for that bathroom. No, no, I mean that, that's the kind of thing. Well, no, ma'am. You know, yeah. yes, I will get that to you. Okay. It, yeah, and, and I just want to iterate with the upgrades. You said two hundred thousand in upgrades, and you know, Mr. Hillensbeck. Well, that's what it. Mr. Hillensbeck would like for Oak Grove. That's but just Oak Grove. Well, that's you know, just what he wants for Oak Grove, and you know, I, I agree with Cheryl have, far as prioritizing. You know, I agree. and I guess you need to come to us with that list, and you know, and well, my budget's already in. Okay. Now, in the past, we have done pull some money out of general fund and put mm -hmm. in rec before in the past hit years, probably in the 90s. Mm -hmm. Same thing as like Lamar Dixon. We're taking money out of Lamar Dixon and sinking in Lamar Dixon right now. You know, 1.6 million, I that's recreation. That's 1.6 million that went to uh, Lamar Dixon. So as the council, what Cheryl was trying to say, I believe is, if you need it, if you show us where you need it, we can maybe go to the council and try to put more money in this, that's more than 1.2 million that's already allocated for it, if it has to be there out of general fund. Well, I can tell you the need is there, but again, I can't submit a budget that's in deficit. That, that's but if you, give us the, if you give us your needs, I guess is what I'm saying, and what we need for the capital, needs, but yeah, capital projects, capital outlay projects, we'll do. so we can see what, how much we need you know, to, to address, especially prioritize with bathrooms and stuff like that, that really well, has I'm a gonna necessity have to, to, at have to I will have to cut somewhere to put that bathroom you know, in Southwood. That it I, I know the upgrades as far as just, you know, picking it up some is fine, but prioritizing is critical, you know, when it comes to no bathrooms at a facility. So mm -hmm. we need to look at that. And, you I know, agree. if we do need more money, you know, we, we need to see how much we need to put in. Sh Cheryl. Uh, Mr. Hillenbeck <laughs> got next. <laughs> Yeah, 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 and I, I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing with Ms. Fontenot on some of the comments she's made. I, uh, but, but again, I, we, we had a conversation right before the meeting, and I asked you some of this information. Yes, and I, it's in my budget, Council. Okay, okay, exactly. And, and you told me that you... It's there for upgrades. Right. It's up please, there please, for... Uh, you know, it, it's Here. there. Look. <laughs> Only one can speak at one time. Let him ask the question, Ms. Cheryl. Okay, and, and just so everyone answer, will please. know... You, you, you know, you do submit the budget. Yes. And I understand it comes from the administration, and, and of course we have some input on that too. And then, but but in the final end, the council votes on the budget, and we can move things around. We can cut here and put money over there. But you submitted the budget, and you said said I, I'm submitting a budget for three million. Yeah, I submitted one that was big, but okay. I can tell you, and I also okay. told you they would pair that back down think, within yeah, those well, they, constraints. They can pair, excuse me, the, the administration can pair, but guess what? We're the governing authority, and we can go back, and maybe we can cut some money in some other areas and put the money back, and, and we can take care of, of uh, Jackie Robinson and Southwood and do some things at Oak Grove. Um, you know, the, the same old, same old is just not good enough. And that's the point I'm gonna make, and and I'm not. I don't think anybody around the table disagree with me. You're talking with regard to money. Uh, there's oh. regards to what's out there in place right now. Now I'm not gonna tell you for a minute that you're gonna get three million dollars approved. Oh, I, f I fully don't expect it. Yeah. But, but you, know, you but you, you might wish, you might be surprised wish, how much you, you do big. get. And what um, what we I think we ought to be given, Cheryl, is a copy of your budget, what you sent to the administration, so we'll know what was cut. Okay. So if you could, if you could, you know, Mr. Chairman, if you'd get a copy of that, and make sure we all have a copy. You want to make that motion? I'll uh, yeah, I'll make that motion, Cheryl. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I just think we need to know what you requested in your budget, and you work okay. for us too. I mean, yeah, you asked it to administrate, but we're the governing authority, so we want to see all the right, numbers. All right, the motion is on the floor to okay. get a copy of the budget that you submitted to the administration. Yeah. And and again, they That's they the go. Yeah. The okay. All right. All right. <laughs> we yeah. going into 
<laughs> we going and voting right now. All in favor for it. Say aye. Uh, all right, then. That's it. We got to pass. Right. Get a copy. I'll give you a copy. Good. Hey, May I? I got a quick question. I just want to make sure, in addition to the budget, though, y'all have also requested a needs analysis on the park, something separate. What for the what, budget? What we needed, yeah. What you needed. Okay, yes. so there's going to be a separate document coming too, right? Okay. Well, May, may I finish? I, I, just, I just wanted to oh. say the same thing as Mr. Hillens back, that even though the budget is already submitted, this council can appropriate more dollars, but it must have justification and identification. Yes. So, uh, in fact, just one last comment, and I'll hush. Goes in order here now. Uh -huh. okay. Goes in order. Right. Cheryl? But, but that's basically, you know, we'll because I, I think you're, you're misunderstanding that since your budget's in, that that you don't have enough money. But that is, like Mr. Hillensbeck said, our call as right. a council, as a whole council, to put more in there. Right. All I can do is follow the guidelines that I'm given through the administration, and, and that's what I do. Um, I'm administrative, you're legislative. And we're just well, asking for a copy of right. it so we can make a, a decision on where we're going with those funds. You got one more question. Go <laughs> yeah, Mr. Kent. Uh -huh. 200,000 fold growth. Could you give us a little description of where the upgrades, what I this think, is going to persist of? Um, I think what we talked about there was knocking out, you know, expanding the ex existing center and making it larger to accommodate more people. 200,000 is going to do that? Uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, I have to be really conservative. You know, that Excuse me, you, with you have to look at that, you know, a quote or something for well, us. Well, uh, and, and I'm not picking any one district over another, um, but you're right. Prioritizing to me is, is the most important thing, and it really bothers me. I've said this to you before, that we do not have a bathroom at Southwood. We are yeah. using porta potties there. So, but what I'm saying is, before we have the plan, we need to know what the 200000 is going to be for. You right. know, show us on either a little some type of printout, you know. Right, you and, know. and usually I'll just put a blanket amount because to cover what I think is going to be construction costs, whether we're going to do it in-house, whether we're going to bid it out, those kinds of things. But um, please keep in mind that Darrow Community Center could use an upgrade. Uh, Geismer could be expanded. Geismer is a very hard facility to lease for weddings because we don't have the parking there. Um, we can park 26 or 32 cars. So Geismer actually needs to be expanded in a lot of ways. So there's a lot of upgrades that need to happen out there. Um, and, you know, everybody that lives in a certain district, we want to wow. take care of our districts and, first. And one and more, one more so. quick to add on to it. You know, you keep talking about maybe we have to go to the public and, and look at it, maybe a rec tax. And maybe that may be Eventually, something that you I need to start we, working yeah, on we have. and bring to us, you know, and we let have. us look at it, you know, because... Uh, uh, and I think that Most parishes where Breck do have is going to be really tax, invaluable. Uh, dedicated, you know, so we, we definitely need to look at it. Yeah, and that was one of the things that I talked with Bill Palmer about exclusive, uh, um, extensively. Uh, they just passed their renewal for 3.36 right. mm -hmm. with a 71 percent approval. Correct. Um, Breck is a legislative district. They are completely separate from Baton Rouge government. Mm -hmm. uh, they're set up by the legislator, legislature, excuse me. So they don't go to, they have a commission that they answer to. They do not answer to. Mm -hmm. um, same as the drainage board, yeah. Yeah, same kind of thing. Uh, Everville Parish always ha has the same thing. Um, I think that's an area that we need to go only because if we feel like there's a tax that's needed, Brett calls it tax, and it's politically safe for their council because it's not tied to them. So it would be nice if we could work toward that end. Um, on August the 26th, the American Ramp Company Cheryl, will... Cheryl, you got one more, Mr. Hillenbeck. Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry, Cheryl, Cheryl. And, and, I'll, and I'll finish with this. Uh, and I, I realize we're throwing a lot of numbers out there, but again, I, it was my understanding uh, it was 250000 that you put in there for Oak Grove. Okay. And, and I guess I want to go back to what happened last year. When, as we were approving the budget, we also had a I wouldn't call it a crisis, but we had a problem in the parish with mosquito control. And this council upped the budget. I think I made the motion, Todd seconded it, and we, we added to the mosquito control budget by 100 grand that night. So, I mean, we have that authority. And we look at the numbers, and, and so we, we and, and you know what? We've had real good mosquito control this year. Now, we, we had a lot of rain early on. We've had a lot of heat recently. But uh, yeah. with the additional trucks that were bought, the additional equipment, the part-time people put on, mosquito c control hadn't been a problem or issue this year. I'm finished. 
All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. But, but again, we make that final call about moving. We'll have and this we on will. agenda next meeting. Mm -hmm. We're just talking about the budget, the budget that you put in, and upgrades of what we need to do through the parks in the parish. That'll be on the agenda next meeting for Ms. Cheryl to have, and we'll talk in length on that portion of it. Okay? Okay, may I? You got the floor, Thank Michelle. you. Um, on August the 26th, the American Ramp Company will be visiting Ascension Parish for a free demo with ramps and promotional <clears throat> materials. Uh, we would like to really gauge the interest by having um, Ascension Civic Center full, um, but I think that will give us an idea how many people might come to a skate park. So again, that's on August the 26th at the Ascension Civic Center at 5 o'clock. We'd love to have you out. Uh, met today with um, the Department of Health and Hospitals. Uh, we are piloting the program in the state of Louisiana called the Jambalaya Project, which is a full inclusion structured league for inclusion. Um, we have $42,000 where we will be training. And um, as I said last month, we're just kind of giving another resource for um, citizens and parents children of disabilities to have their own structured league. This in no way means that they won't have full inclusion if they still would like to play in the regular leagues. Um, I told you last month we had a pretty good experiment this year with baseball. So um, they now have more than one opportunity to play in different areas and at different levels. So we're real proud about that. And even the uh, projects that um, when we pilot and we go next year to other parts of the state, it will be called the Jambalaya Project. So this is our binder. This is our logo. Um, the kids will all have T-shirts. We will be paying stipend for trainings. We have included $6,000 so that we can access um, those citizens with disabilities who can't get to the program. That would include the west side and the northern part of the parish since they would be coming to Santa Mar Park. Uh, we included some money in there for a psychologist. Uh, and we also included some money for administrative. And that is being done, um, partnered with the Arc of Louisiana, the Arc of Baton Rouge, the Advocacy Center, the Capital Area Human Services District, the Louisiana Assistive Technology Access Network, Community Opportunities of East Ascension, Families Helping Families, People First of Louisiana, Louisiana State University, and Southeastern Louisiana University. So we're really happy. We think we're going to be able to pull some of our teachers in from our adaptive PE. So we're really excited and um, we're really proud to be piloting that program. Uh, and they came to us after seeing what we were going to do. It's not that we sought them out. They sought Ascension Parish out. So I'm really proud of that. And I'm really proud of the two young ladies that have stepped up to the plate, both of whom will be teaching adaptive PE in Ascension Parish this year. So we will have that correlation between schools and recreation, um, which we think is a good thing. We also um, have with us now uh, a contract. We will be partnering with the Ascension Community Theater. Um, we will be giving them the same type of contract that we give to the River Regents Art Gallery, and they will be using it to offset some of their expenses. Um, ABA and Recreation have met, I think, once or twice. Those seem to be going pretty well. Uh, Darren Traham will talk to you, and Brad will talk to you. We are still um, ironing out what we think the criteria for the contract is going to be, but I'm really optimistic so far. The talks have been very um, productive. Uh, they have a tournament there next week, which I think is a uh, Warriors, Warriors tournament. Oh, I just have it in the Warriors on the calendar. They will be having a tournament at Stevens and Santa Mar Park next week, so if you can go out. Um, I'm assuming there's an admission into the parks, but both of our parks will be utilized. Um, Ms. Cheryl, you have a question on oh. that, Ms. Cheryl. Before, before you go any further, uh, you stated that y'all have been meeting, but when I made the statement at the last meeting, I asked for a meeting. I asked for you to put together a meeting with the park people, with the subcommittee from this council and, and the parish administration. And that meeting never happened. 
I, I, I expect it, and and we said it from this from this committee here, that we wanted to have a, a draft of an agreement by August, so that we could process it. In, in order to make sure, because it's got to go through a process to go right. through the council. Right, it has to and, be and I've never gotten an invitation. I'm on the subcommittee, and I never got I, an invitation to me. I apologize. To a then I just misunderstood the directive. I thought you wanted ABA and recreation to come up with an agreement. No, I stand corrected. I will remedy that. Okay. Thank you. Um, other than that. Uh, we have our adults playing at Prairieville and at Butch Gore. The adults will move into fall ball into Butch Gore. Um, and baseball will correct me on this. I'm, I'm probably going to get it wrong. The 13-year-old All-Stars? The 13-year-old All-Stars national? Yeah. National title for our rec team. Uh, so um, other, other than that, we are... Yes? Before you go on that, um, on the equipment. We yes, the equipment is coming back in. That's how I found out about the uh, the championship. The guy brought his equipment back. Okay. Coming in slowly but surely. I think now that All Stars is over, we should be getting more in. Um, coming in much better. Thank you. I think that helped a great deal. Oh. Um, and just on another note before I leave, yesterday um, the Ascension Civic Center was opened up as a cool down shelter. Um, we didn't have many people there. But I think that was a really proactive thing. I've been without power since Saturday. So, and I was over there working yesterday and it was really nice to be in the air condition, but <clears throat> it's nice that, <clears throat> excuse me, those centers are not just there for recreation. Um, I think yesterday and Sunday and Saturday, everybody's quality of life going out to the Diversion Canal was hot and sweaty. So I, I just would like to say I'm really proud of Ascension Parish and, and I'm glad that the Ascension Civic Center could be there to be utilized for that. Uh, I don't know what it cost us, but I thought it was well worth it. Okay. have any more questions for Ms. Chairman? One question. Oh, perfect. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. How, how many you, uh, showed up, Ms. Cheryl? Uh, there were four people at one time, and then there was a group of about eight or nine people. I tried to call the councilmen that I thought were affected, and I apologize if you had people out that I didn't know about. Um, we had one lady who called who was, I think, 22 weeks pregnant, living in a trailer, and she was really looking for some relief. So I, I didn't see her there, but I don't know if they got her relief in the way of water. Um, the biggest problem that, that I think I saw was just because our power is out, how to get that message out to those people, even with an emergency channel. Um, without power, if you don't have a generator, you're kind of stuck. So we had the fire departments going out, making some calls, <clears throat> but it did work. So, and and um, as a council, I'd just like to say thank you for that because there were a lot of people who did access it, but it was nice to know that it was there had we needed it last night to sleep. And, Ms. Sharon, are we using our channel to broadcast at the cool, a cool down station, a cool down point? Do we advertise it on our channel? Um, I, I, I haven't seen You'd have to ask Rick Weber that. Like I say, I didn't have power, so I didn't know anything was going on over the weekend. But one of the, th that was the biggest problem that we had yesterday was how to get the word out with people who are out of power. And, and a lot of those people don't have generators. So okay. I would say that would be um, maybe a proactive plan would be that when the temperature reaches 105 and the power goes out, you have it designated so that everybody knows ahead of time. But I can tell you that Rick Weber did a fabulous job and is already thinking about uh, every time he has an event, he assesses and then he plans and tweaks for the next quote unquote disaster. And, and you know, you saw how many people that affected, and that wasn't anything having to do with terrorism or it was simply you know, an act of God, if you will, or a bird in the transform or whatever it was. But uh, that was 8,000 people at one time. And, you know, so. Yeah. But, uh, but I think that as a council, I, I was really, I really thought that was a, a great thing to do. Like I said, if we needed to go there last night, it was nice to know that we would have had a place to go. Oh. So, um, Councilman Lambert, do you mind if I mention the bucket truck? Yeah, please. Um, I had gotten in touch. Excuse me. One of the things that we Excuse really me. felt like. Just one moment, Ms. Young. Ms. Uh, Salma, can you know that Mr. Hillenbeck has uh, left the meeting? He's not present. Okay? Um, one of the things that we had talked about was our constant rising cost of utilities. And um, so I went online and I started looking for bucket trucks. Well, all I could really find were used bucket trucks, and we cannot buy used equipment. Uh, government can't buy used equipment. 
So I started thinking about who we knew that worked in that industry. Um, and I knew that Councilman uh, Dempsey Lambert had some connections there. So I kind of asked about what a donation would be and if he had any ideas about that. And I found out that a <clears throat> new bucket truck would cost me about 150000 But if you think about all of the people in the parish that would use a bucket truck, we don't have a bucket truck in Ascension Parish in any department, but I could save thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year, and over a course of five years, um, we would pay for the truck. Most of our money last year in utilities comes out with calling out the truck and the labor. We keep our own bulbs, we keep our own lenses. So we had the material, it's the call-out cost. So I think a bucket truck over five years would pay for itself. So just wanted to let you know that that, that is a really big item for us on the wish list. And we have looked at certifying somebody for the liability reason of oh, using yeah, that bucket truck. Oh yeah, if we had truck. one, um, it would have to have somebody trained to use the, the equipment. Because it's a big liability with the very insurance. Big you big might want to look at the insurance very also. Big liability. And that, that's another thing we'll talk yeah. about with Breck. They also brought up liability. Um, but Breck has three. Uh, he said we could use one if we wanted, but we told him no. We thought <laughs> we were going to get our own bucket truck. So anyway, I have asked um, Councilman Lambert, because I know he's in that industry, um, but we need one with an 80-foot extension to get to all of our poles. So I think if I had a really big expense, that's one thing that I really feel the Recreation Department could utilize. And it's not going to get a lot of wear and tear. Um, so I think that we could make it last. Plus, we even talked about charge-outs from other departments. You know, just in the parking lot here, they, I don't know how they change the bulbs or how they paint or cut trees. Or, but I think it would be a really proactive move for us to have a bucket truck in Ascension Parish. Okay. Thank you for bringing it up. Thank you for your report. Any other questions? That's it. Mr. Um, Brad Thompson. And also, Mr. Brad Thompson, you have Daryl Trahan. I think it's Darren. Darren. All right, thank you. Uh, what I wanted to do was give you all an update. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about was the All-Stars. We were real proud of all of our volunteer coaches and kids and families that um, went out and represented the parish. And our 13-year-olds won the state championship and the World Series this year, so that was really great. Our 12-year-olds were runner-ups. Our sevens finished in the top three. Um, we're probably leaving some people out, but a lot of them, those were the teams that really achieved a lot. We were represented in ages 7 through 18 around the uh, state, and the World Series was in Pineville. They, one thing that I wanted to talk to the council about is this is an uh, organization that represents the whole parish, but we're not represented by the parish in the financing for it. ABA pays 100% of the bill for All Stars, which with that many teams, you know, it was about, last year it was $12,000, so we had to cut back to one team per age group. What we did, though, was allowed to, if they won state or came in the top three, was the top three or first two? It was first two, right? First two places, then we would pay for their World Series entry fee as well. And a lot of them did that, so it ended up last year was a twelve thousand dollar expense to ABA, and this year was about eight thousand eight hundred dollar expense. You know, we pay for the uniforms as well as the entry fees into these events. So one thing I would would ask is if we could get some kind of um, help from the the council, the parish, wherever, to help offset some of these costs because we don't, you know, the the. Natural answer to everybody is it costs eight to twelve thousand dollars. We'll get rid of the all-star program. Well, we don't think that that's the answer. The, the, the answer is they're representing this parish, which is a very big uh, parish and, and wealthy parish. That you know we could get some kind of assistance. Um, in the past, we had some help, and I think we got about three thousand dollars back towards it. We're not getting any money back now. And, you know, that's a huge chunk of money that we could be using to improve the facilities, um, you know, the wind screening, the covered bleachers and things like that. Um, 
we are raising money, being wise with the money, and uh, being good stewards of the money for the people of ABA. But when you're putting out more money than you're taking in, it's kind of hard to do a whole lot of improvements. So those are that's one area that we would ask that you know if there's such a way that the committee could appropriate the funds directly to ABA, that would help us out a lot. Um, and we think it's a you know just request. The other um, you know we still haven't had any security lights out at the ballparks. Um, you know, I don't know where it's getting tied up or lost. Um, this has been a three-year request. I was at Lowe's the other day. I think a security light costs 40 bucks that would come on at night and go off in a day. Um, you know, I'm not authorized to go tie into the power at the ballpark, but, you know, at this point, you know, we could put the money up if it's the money to get three security lights if somebody could get them put up out there. It's, you know, there is flood lights, uh, security lights that will come on when it gets uh, dark and then go back off at daylight, and they're not expensive. You just got to be able to tie into electricity somewhere. So, you know, that's one area that we really need to get done. It's, it's not safe out there at night. It's really dark, and, you know, I... I'm 45. Yeah, I'm a little concerned when I'm leaving there, pitch dark, trying to get to my car. But I can imagine with with uh, you know a mom with kids trying to load up in the cars going through, if they have to park at the back of the parking lot, and they're the last ones out, you know it it could be a pretty scary uh, event for them. So you know we really need to work together and try to get this done. The uh, other thing I just happened to notice. Um, a Advocate River Parish Bureau published August the 10th says the Ascension Parish sales tax revenue continued to rise in July, exceeding the pace of parish government record tax collections in 2006. Amanda Burette told the Council's Finance Committee on Thursday that tax revenue for 2007 is ahead of 2006 year to date and on track to set another ca uh, collection year record. You know, so when we listen to the meetings, it sounds like we're the poorest parish in the state, but that's not the case. I don't think we need to have another tax on the citizens. We, we've got money. We just need to use the money more wisely that we have. We have Gonzales City program. I think we have a million dollars more in tax base than they do. They've got probably a million more lights on their poles for the ballpark than what we do at ours. You know, so I think, you know, Breck is big and Breck is, is wide spanning and they have a lot of area to cover. But I think the city program is probably a lot closer to the amount of parks and, and uh, things that we have to control. I think we need to get over there and kind of mimic what they're doing and see what they're doing. Because with less money, they're actually spending a lot more on, on recreation than what we're able to do. And I don't know if it's, you know, if they have more money allocated toward the rec program over there or you know where the priorities are, but right. they're putting. They got um, concrete poles. Must be about 16 lights on one pole. We don't have 16 lights on the seven, eight, and nine-year-old field combined at the ballpark. You know, and um, so those are some areas that we want to work with y'all to, to try to help bridge the gap. Um, we're not here to point fingers at anybody or anything. Uh, Cheryl, every time I've asked her for something, if it's something that she could provide us with, she has. Um, you know, she gets the tractor out there and, and the tiller for me to get the fields ready. And anytime we've had a problem out there, she's gotten somebody out there to try to help us do it. Um, you know, it, it's, it's not a matter of wanting to do it. I think it's a matter of just having a, the money available to get it done or the people. And I think that's where we're falling short. I think the... Uh, the study I would like to see done is how many people does the city have allocated to recreation on upkeep of the premises compared to the parish? Because I think it that's where the fall off is. I think um, Cheryl and them may have eight, six to eight people that are out there trying to cut grass, and a lot of these people are up in age. 
you know, I was on that tractor for five hours in 107 degree weather Saturday, and I can tell you, I had Florida water and everything, and that towel was dry in five minutes. You know, and these guys are a lot older than me, trying to cut it at uh, before four o'clock in the afternoon or twelve o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, it, that's a lot to ask somebody to do. Right. And uh, so I think you know the the areas we need to try to help work on is getting people more people to be able to do the work. I think they want to cut the grass, but I, I think there's just so much grass to cut and so few of them to try to get around to it. It's an impossible task. The other thing I happen to notice is that in the Eddie Crawford General Manager Lamar Dixon Expo Center told the committee center had lost one million two hundred sixty-six thousand nine hundred sixteen dollars since SMG has been managing the facility with uh, parish government lease from Lamar Dixon. You know, that's our tax right there. Um, you know, I know everybody likes M Lamar Dixon if they have an event to go there for, but, you know, practically speaking, that $1.2 million could be added to the budget for recreation and, and everybody in the parish's facilities that they use on a daily basis would be much improved. Um, you know, if the state wants to take over Lamar Dixon, I think that would be a great idea, but we could use the money we're losing and not raise taxes for the citizens of, of the parish because, you know, that that's a lot of money right there. If we just had the money we're losing, we'd have all the money we need. Now, uh, Darren is going to fill you all in on, on more of the uh, other assets of ABA that he wanted to speak to you about. That's just a couple of things I wanted to talk about. If uh, you know, if you could help us with the all-star program, we would appreciate that. And what you would see in return for that is those revenues would go back into the facilities. We could co cover bleachers for the amount of money we've spent out on on the uh, on those things, and then everybody at the ballpark could enjoy it rather than just the ones that are selected to the all-star program. You know, that's a great honor and great treat, but, you know, like I said, nine to $12,000, $21,000 in two years, which, you know, we're going to keep doing. But I think as, as citizens of the parish and representing this parish, I'd like to see the parish help represent the kids a little bit, too. Anybody have any questions? Mr. Hillenbeck? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Brad, I, I just want to... Uh, well, first of all, I'm going to agree with you. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I think you're right about raising taxes, and I'm, I'm not in favor of uh, raising any taxes. I'm, I'm definitely in favor of us spending our tax dollars more wisely. I'm going to agree with you on that point, but I guess I'm going to respectfully disagree with you about Lamar Dixon, and I'll, I'll try to make it short and, and answer why. Uh, first of all, uh, if that facility was built today, probably cost the neighborhood of $100 million. And we, we can purchase it for $7.5 million as it is. Yeah, we'd have to spend a couple of million, maybe $2.5 million climate control in the main arena. Uh, but, you know, that is another form of recreation to the parish, a form of entertainment. You know, not every child in this parish plays baseball. You got a lot of kids that show animals. You got a lot of agricultural events going out there, and you know, I, and I've only lived here since '81. But there's been a lot of d poor decisions made over the years. One was uh, water and sewage over the years. Water, whether or not to get into the water business, whether or not to accept 75 cents on the dollar for sewage capital improvements. Mr. Hillman, can uh, we stay I'm a, on recreation? I'm gonna be real, and 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 I look at Lamar Dixon as. Um, a gift horse, and I was always taught, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. And we got to look not only now, but we have to look down the road. What is that facility going to mean to Ascension Parish in 15 or 20 years? And again, to me, uh, I, we don't make a dime on baseball and, and recreation that's provided, and that's great. But that is a quality of life issue for many children in the parish. Lamar Dixon is also... Uh, a quality of life issue for the residents and the children of Ascension Parish, and it's also an economic uh, engine that drive that helps uh, generate tax dollars for Ascension Parish. 
Now, I agree a lot of those dollars right now go to the city of Gonzales, but as hotels and as the parish can, uh, continues to develop, you're going to see additional revenues generated. And so, you know, I'm just going to respectfully disagree with you on that issue and say that is recreation, that is family entertainment, and that is a doggone goodbye. And and so I, I, I'm going to, you know, disagree with you there. Well, Thank you. If, if I could, I don't no, want to. No, that's Mr. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, <laughs> just in, in a little response to this, Lamar Dixon, you know, th this this council voted to bring it to the people to buy it. As of right now, we're not buying it. We're losing money. That's right. We're a straight out leasing Lamar Dixon at twenty eight thousand dollars a month, just a straight out lease. This council wanted to bring it to the people, to let the people decide whether they wanted to fund it, because it's going to take some funding. Because the parish does not have big enough pocketbooks to cover Lamar Dixon 1.6 million loss, you know, on a regular basis. We just don't have big enough pocketbooks for that, and uh, we got vetoed. You know, that didn't go through. And Mr. Hillensbeck did say that, you know, we needed to buy it, but we're not in any process of buying it, you know, or, or looking in any future of buying it. Other than waiting on grant money, that's not coming down. So, I, I you know. Disagree in one way, it, you know. Yeah, we do. It's a fine facility, but we do need to buy it. We need to let the people decide it, whether they want it or not, and bring it to the people. So, if other I, other than that, what I really want to uh, question on: bring all these updates to a subcommittee. I think we need to have this subcommittee that Cheryl talked about. With all your concerns, uh, Mr. Thompson, bring them to us so we can, you know. Three security lights three years ago you asked for, you don't have now. I, I see our director left. I could have questioned her, but she's already left the meeting. Uh, we need to have a subcommittee and, and, and work this out. And that's what Cheryl had an intention of was get this subcommittee, get these co comments, concerns, and put them together and resolve them. So we will, I want to make a motion that we form, you know, have this meeting, the subcommittee meeting, as quick as we can, Mr. Joe, and get these concerns. Uh, already, well, we well, have we have the meeting set up. It's just that we would not inform of the meeting. Okay. Uh, uh, well, I, I'd like to to correct that. We stated we wanted such a meeting with the subcommittee, and that's on TV. Okay, that's on, that's on our meeting, so it's it's do, it's well documented. It did not happen, <laughs> but. We and we directed a, a administration to get the meeting together. So may I make the suggestion that we call the meeting? That's fine. Yeah, I don't wish to meet without everybody present because it's not doing us any good. Yeah. Well, we would call the meeting and invite everybody, and hopefully, sure. you know, we wouldn't leave anybody away from the table. We would have a subcommittee meeting with everybody, but it, we would call it so that we can make sure that everybody is at the table, not just a few. And the only other thing that I, I, I wanted to say, because I felt that I needed to say it too, is about the economic benefit of Lamar Dixon. We have all, uh, the whole council has been unified on buying Lamar Dixon. We've always argued about the funding of how to get the funds. Some of us don't want to take from the general fund to fund losses. You know, if the people want it, they should have been given the chance, then they will have to put a tax, but that's what the, the reports call for, a dedicated funded me mechanism. We haven't been able to get it from the state. We haven't been able get it, to get it from the federal government or anywhere. But we did get a report that said that $866,000 were generated. The only problem is that money was generated in the city of Gonzales. Now, to me, the mayor, who's got lots of money to fund his park system, should be at the table. But I believe that the mayor is a very smart businessman and has obviously chosen not to get involved in funding something that he's benefiting from because it wasn't a good idea for him. So I'm in agreement with Todd. We tried to, to do the right thing by the people, give the people the opportunity to buy it. That didn't happen. Uh, everything that's been been coming down is not looking like it's going to happen, and we're we're still putting money out. And here we are sitting here with the things that has been fund, fund, funded for years, allowing it to just deteriorate and go down to nothing, and having our people come 
meeting after meeting after meeting and nothing really gets done. And Mr. Thompson, we, this council, has been over backwards in the past four months doing everything we can to direct administration to take care of your needs. We're a legislative body. We, we, we set out the rules and, and the, uh, the regulations, and we've done all that we can. And we're going to continue with this subcommittee to even try to get it better. But apart from, uh, apart from what we've done already, we, we obviously can't make administration take care of your needs. And I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize to you for that. We appreciate y'all working with us, and, and we do feel like everybody Wicked is discussion. concerned and trying. But, um, you know, like I said, all we're wanting to do is try to work with everybody involved, all three groups, to just resolve and get things going in the right direction for the kids. Nobody's taking anything personal. You know, we just want the results for the kids. It, you know, they're putting the money out, too. We've got a pretty form of a tax already and a pretty good registration fee and they're buying their own uniforms and, and the services that are supposed to be providing for them just aren't getting provided. Um, one thing I would like to clear up though is is I'm not against, um, you know, I like agriculture and everything else as well and, and the company I work for is big on that. I'm not against having recreation at Lamar Dixon for the people. What I was referring to more is, you know, I saw where Bob Odom in the state of Louisiana was wanting to buy it and provide those services for the people just like they are now. It just wouldn't be coming out of Ascension Parish's pocket um, as far as that's what I'm talking about, not that we shouldn't have the facilities because I think it's great facilities and everybody benefits from it. But uh, maybe sharing the ownership would help out a lot more and, and right. lessen the burden on the, on the citizens. Just one uh, last we're gonna move on. We're gonna move one on for Mr. 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 Doug. We're gonna move on. We've been on this issue, and we this is a conversation that's gonna go on forever. <laughs> ABA and Lamar Dixon gonna be here till tomorrow morning. We we know how everyone feels on this issue, and uh, we're working on it. And it's a sensitive issue here, but it's a process we're gonna have to go through, you know, till we get something right. Well, okay. And I just think it's important that people are here. And uh, Mr. Doug Hillen back. Okay. Thank uh, you. Um. Thank you very much, Mr. Thompson. Mr. Um, Thank y'all. Darren Trahan, you have three minutes because you signed up on your state. Good evening. How are you doing? Darren. I'm Darren Trahan. I'm the acting secretary of Ascension Baseball Association. Uh, going back to an issue that was discussed, uh, I think, a couple of meetings ago about umpire situation concerning the 2007 season that just transpired. Uh, I was able to compile the information that was forwarded to us. Um, I have some copies, if I can, I can give to y'all. We can actually see it. Okay. Uh, Whatever's easier. Right here. What this is is a graph representing. I don't know how well you can see it. Uh, okay. The number of games played by Ascension Baseball Association participants. The green columns on the graph. Red columns is what was staffed with umpires responsibility being PRC, the parish. Um, 502 games total were played. 219.11 was provided for, less than 50%. Now, 2005, Parish Council asked for an increase, adopted it for registration. Justification, fees associated with baseball. The amount of fees paid from registration was a little bit over $22,000. 885 participants in boys baseball. Services paid for in advance by parishioners for the youth of the parish. Less than 50% was fulfilled. So if I go to the next page, let's look at the dollar analysis. Here's the summary, we'll just skip to it since I know time is of the essence here. Um, to fully fund umpires for all the games that were scheduled for boys baseball, $20,380. Parish appropriated uh, from PARC in payment to umpires, $12,518. The process is if one umpire shows up for a baseball game and two are supposed to officiate it, they pay the single umpire additional 
for having to take on the task by themselves. Noble effort. Still 50% delivered service. That's what that $1,172.50 amount is, is those 50% officials on the field. So thus, it was stated in previous meetings by ABA membership, approximately $6,000 in deficit and umpires that uh, we had to reach to our pockets and, and scrounge last minute for people. Um, the fact is that the people paid for it, services weren't provided, and the actual amount is $9,000. I believe this issue went to Paris Council and it was voted on to reimburse $6,000, not to ABA, but to the people that paid for it. Okay? Um, understand there may be some red tape associated with the process that needs to be followed for reimbursement um, with respect to us paying people out of our fund to uh, officiate the games last minute, what we were able to gather to try and overcome the short shortfall. But that's not the issue with worrying about Social Security numbers and 1099 forms. The issue is services were not provided by the parish. The people paid for it. People need to be reimbursed. So Ms. I'm Sheriff. curious how you feel on, on that Ms. issue. Sheriff. As I recall, it was unanimous to reimburse ABA for a fence <clears throat> that they put up and for fees that were paid out of their pocket. To this date, nobody from administration has come back to this council. We authorize you to be paid. And to this date, nobody has come back from administration to this council to say that they couldn't follow through on that. Now, if they're going to tell you, if they're telling you that they can't because they need this and that and the other, we were the ones that directed them to pay. And they should have come back to us to tell us what we needed to do to accomplish what we set out to do the first time. So I, I take your, uh, your uh, recommendation or, or your, your information here, and I think that as a council we need to investigate or we need to have somebody come to tell us why it is that when we direct it, something to be done that it wasn't done and we weren't notified that it wasn't possible to do it and, and, and Cheryl on that on that what well, we requested it we made sure it was pending legal and finance approval now I'm, I agree with you if they had a legal issue on it or financed it they should have came back to us and gave us some direction now and, and that's where we at I'm pretty sure that's the problem Okay. The legal haven't blessed it because some reason, but we don't know what that reason is. Okay, and I know that's the way our motion was, and that's the way we voted on it. Now we need to find out, like Cheryl say, what is the, you know, how can we correct it? Is it is, it is it reasonable to expect by this time next month this issue be resolved? I, we have to get the information, and we have to bring it back here, and then we have to go back to the council to right uh, make a. Uh, motion to change that amend that uh, okay. motion that we made well I just want to I guess reiterate the the issue is services were paid for by registrants in the program they were not provided that's the issue not out-of-pocket expense relative to paying officials that weren't listed as employees and and, and, and I can understand that, okay. but and right now, days, uh, if you just read the paper enough, we don't want to do anything illegal I, to I, cost ourselves to get any exposure that we already have. To okay? Take place. Uh, but represent the people. Mr. Lamb. And Mr. Tran, I think you had receipts on all these umpires and everything, right? Correct? I uh, know. That is incorrect. That's incorrect. Correct. Okay. Uh, the reason being is we weren't prepared for it. Okay. The uh, system was set up to where uh, pre Umpires are supposed to be supposed provided. to be taken care of by uh, PRC. We're told that they were being taken care of week to week when they weren't. Um, 
So thus we didn't have a system in place as, as an organization to be prepared for that I understand. because we were told it wasn't necessitous. Okay. Mr. Oliver, I guess what I want to do is make a motion to request finance to get back with this board either by email. Don't wait till the next meeting. We want to know what's the status. So and how we can, can we solve? What? How can we, you know, move forward with this reimbursement? So, don't put these guys on for another month. We need to see what it's going to take from this board, whether we have to have a special meeting or not. You know, yeah, let's, I'll let's second that motion with some discussion. Okay. We got the motion on We also want to put that on the subcommittee. This, uh, yeah. I would recommend on the subcommittee right. agenda that that item also be addressed at that meeting. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Mr. Hill and Bex yeah. have a question on no, the motion. No, just discussion on discussion the motion. Discussion on yeah. the motion. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, Darren, thanks for coming this evening. Um, and again, uh, I guess there's two issues really here. One is the reimbursement of expenses and and we're going to need some documentation there whether it be affidavits what have you and and again that's going to I believe that's going to get worked out uh, by the subcommittee and finance and legal and you guys are going to get your money back whatever whatever you're owed mm -hmm. the the other issue here is the lack of referees as I understand it or umpires, or umpires. I'm, I'm sorry I'm thinking referees that's that's what I was in AYBA but ba uh, umpires in baseball uh, I've done a little research on this, and the city of Gonzales program, as I understand it, they require the coaches to participate and umpire as well so many games. Now, according to information I have, and, and, and I'm not asking you to confirm this or deny this, i just like you to go look at this, that this might be a way to, to if, if we would put that rule in, that the assistant coaches, maybe not the head coaches, but assistant coaches, agree to umpire so many games you know the, with the stipulation that they're going to be paid that might that might put some quality umpires qual baseball people helping call the games and you know not calling games necessarily in, the, in their league but um, but do it handle it in such a manner like the city of Gonzales because right. I think that's how they make up that shortfall of referees well the issue are of, of umpires Mr. Hillensbeck, the issue wasn't quality of umpireship. Uh, the issue was no, no umpires, quantity. not enough umpires, and, and, right? And, and, and I, and this is how they handle. It. I don't want to get into the quality of all. That's right, just so how they address ABA, that issue. ABA, and maybe yeah. we need to look at that right. from the APRC program. And that's something I want you to get with and Brad mm -hmm. to get with Ms. Ms. Kenshin about. Right. And and maybe this can be discussed also, Cheryl. And, well, that's and, uh, the information that's supposed meeting. to be in. in so if we if we do something along those lines, that's going to help address that problem. Plus, those guys are going to get paid for paid for participating. Okay? Well, the corporate agreement that we're discussing is is supposed to be uh, working towards identifying issues that are associated with delivering necessary services. Yeah, and, and, and we're going to pay for the services, but yeah, we yeah. need you guys to help us provide right. the numbers. I mean, Sherry's saying one thing that. They're not out there. They're not stepping up. So, I mean, y'all help us help you help your program. That's that's my point. Well, well, again, that's end up. when you need. Yeah, the uh, uh, just one quick thing about the, uh, I think the city's program. I think the coaches do umpire, but I think it's just the opening tournament, which is no pay. But the rest of the season, they're uh, uh, paid umpires throughout the whole season. That is correct. I mean, it was it was a paid arrangement that the parish PRC had care custody control for delivering that service to the program. Correct. Okay, so bottom line, that's where the shortfall was. Yes, sir. Okay, uh -huh. but, but again, going back to 2005 ordinance for raising registration fees to the parishioners participating was to supposed to fund that. Right, but that this is certainly an option. Mr. Back to you don't have the floor. Mr. Yeah. Uh, oh, have the floor, and Ms. Cheryl will have the floor now. I just wanted to say that uh, as I recall over the years, because we played ball in the city and my grandsons played this year in the city, uh, the fields are maintained by the city. They don't have to have, the, our, our coaches are going out there volunteering to make sure that those infields are ready for Ms. the Cheryl, children. Ms. Cheryl, so, I, just if we can just stay on the umpire. But, I mean, I but understand it, it that, but that, that, that once again, too, this yeah. ABA, and we right now we are just addressing that issue with ABA reimbursement, and if we can stay on that, because ABA, you know, we have been through this meeting here mm -hmm. long enough that we can go from A to Z, 
And, and, and I agree with you, Mr. Oliver, but the point of the matter that Mr. Hillensbeck was bringing up the fact that we should uh, ask our volunteer coaches to do even more with umpiring. My point of the matter is that they're already maintaining the field. They're already doing above and beyond what they are called to do. So uh, I don't think that that's something we should ask them to do. Okay, the motion is on the floor to um, ask uh, finance to get back with us. A request. A request in writing to find out what is the problem. And the motion is on the floor. It's been uh, discussion. The discussion is over. Mr. Hill, I mean, Mr. Uh, Lambert made the motion. Mr. Hill back second. All in favor on that motion say aye. 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 All again. I have. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, okay, Train. Can I make one more comment? Ms. Train, your, your, three minutes, minutes, your three minutes was up a long time ago. Okay, we have I, to move on. I thought on. we were on the agenda with that item. I'm sorry. No, you were. The Mr. Uh, Thompson was. Okay. okay. Appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you. you. West Ascension Recreation Update. Mr. David Boudreaux. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Boudreaux. Dalva. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, of course, y'all know me as David Boudreau. I volunteer for the West Ascension Recreation Department. Um, I kind of follow the jobs that go around the park and um, the scheduling and different things like that. Uh, some of the things we have going on, uh, and Mr. Oliver is aware of, is that Lemonville is the drainage. Uh, we've been working on it, and uh, it's getting closer. We have, um, I have Mr. Kent Schechnader working with him. We have the engineer and um, Mr. Turner and, and Ronald from the Donaldsville Barn. Um, we'll get some dishes cleared out and we'll get some dirt hauled in. And uh, that should take care of that problem. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, another issue you brought up to me, I think, last time was to get a survey of the parks uh, to find out the actual dimensions of the parks. Yes. And um, I think we have a workout out on that because Ms. Kitchen had called me because y'all must ask her for the, for the, uh, for whatever reason the parish needs them. So I'm, I'm just waiting for somebody to contact me and we can get that done. Um, the uh, playgrounds right now are being taken care of. The uh, grass is under control. We've been spraying weed eating and then uh I think the park's in pretty good condition. I think we even had a surprise visit about uh two weeks ago by Mr. Jerry at our Modest Park. He was uh checking it out and we had our welder out there working some parking railing. And thank you. And uh and that's the job we're working on now. We're uh putting up some more of the parking railings and uh putting gates up to uh keep vehicles off the playground while the kids are on them. And uh, we're just about finished that. I'll wrap this up this weekend. Um, the DVL Youth Football League is presently practicing five, six days a week uh, at the Donaldsonville Park. Um, we're in the repair mode right now for, um, for some of the uh, baseball facilities to get them up to date because of what they use. And uh, <clears throat> the uh, Parks are being used quite often. I don't know if Ms. Oliver may know, but people may call them, but uh, I get a, a lot of calls, and I see that the parks are uh, taken care of and that the bathroom's up to date and supplied and everything is there. And um, we pretty much have uh, Modes booked up until October, and I have Lemonville uh, booked up for three or four times over the next two months. And I find that a lot of the neighbors and the people in the community of those parks are taking an active part because uh, it's been months since we had any kind of like vandalism or anything major. You might have little small stuff, but it's, uh, you know, they, the older people who use the park on a weekly basis are really um, taking charge and make sure the parks are staying nicer. And it's, it's um, anybody ever been out to Modest Park and see how nice it is, it's a real pretty park. And uh, the only picture I brought tonight, I will make a uh, PowerPoint presentation. I'll probably have ready by October for uh, the repair we've done this year and let you know, you know, where the money's been going and all. And uh, see if I can show this a little bit. 
Okay, this was, it's a little dark, but this was a playground piece of equipment at Modest Park um, that would have cost about $40,000 to replace. There's some slides and bridge and different tunnels for the kids. And uh, bring it down, you can see the difference. What we did, we cleaned it up, repaired it, uh, made sure all the safety issues were taken care of, and uh, repainted it. And it, uh, for cost of $700. So it made a vast improvement, and that's just one of the items we'll, uh, we'll upgrade. And uh, just to show you one of the park events, uh, we had at the Lemonville Park. Man, every time they bring moonwalks, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of kids. And at this particular uh, event, they had a couple from Germany that had stopped and was on one of the gazebos, and they were invited over to come eat ball crabs and uh, barbecue ribs and all kind of stuff. And uh, they really enjoyed it. So uh, as you can see, the parks are, are being doing very well. And, uh, you know, I don't have any problems. Um, with the work I do, um, if there's any questions, comments, uh, whatever, but we, we're doing okay. Good job, Mr. Keep David. up the good work, Dave. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you very much, Mr. Boudreaux. That's it? My three minutes are up. Thank you very much. <laughs> Moving on to old business. Anyone have any old business? New business, Mr. Mark Peters. Good evening, everybody. My name is Mark Peters. Uh, the name of my organization is Hope Youth Development Incorporated. Uh, we work here in the parish giving kids hope through non-traditional sports. Uh, the sports are golf, tennis, soccer, and also flag football. On this past season or this past summer, we had 65 kids sign up for flag football. It was done in Donaldsonville. Uh, most of the sports are done over there, but I do a lot of sports over here. Uh, we also go into the schools uh, on the West Bank and also on the East Bank. Uh, we're working with the library uh, and all of the schools on the West Bank to try to get a library card initiative uh, going with all the schools so that every kid has the opportunity to get a library card to help them in their reading. We have a lower reading level for the schools in Donaldsonville and that is the role that our organization is taking in part um, with the libraries and also with the schools to help them in that area. We not only do recreation, but we mentor kids throughout the parish and we try to assist them in any kind of way that we can. But we want to try to be visible at the schools as well because we feel that that's the biggest disconnect. A lot of times we do sports and we do it only on the playground, but we never go into the school to see where the kids are ask them how they're doing with their homework, ask them how they're doing with their grades to encourage them as well. Um, if anyone need anything from us, we're here throughout the whole parish. I think I know everybody up here. Uh, so if you guys need anything from us, just let us know. Uh, we don't do any adult golf lessons though, only for kids. Uh, but we wanna thank you guys for everything that you do. And if there's anything I can do here in the parish uh, as a volunteer, um, any assistance, just let our organization know. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mr. Peters, Ms. Sherry, you got something? Mr. Peters, don't leave yet. Ms. Sherry. I just wanted to say thank you. That sounded awesome, and I'd like to learn more. So if you can get me some more information, I'd be glad to uh, see what I can do to help you out you in do. what you yes. do. M Mr. Monk, I have a question. You, you say you do soccer, flag, football, golf. Are yes. your funds come from this admi administration parish or anything? Uh, no, I do not work for anyone on that level. Um, everything was started strictly volunteer. Once I moved from Houston, I saw a need for more things to be done in the community for kids and things outside of the things that were already going on. And uh, we've been pretty successful with everything that we've done so far. Uh, but we have not, I'm not a money person, so I, I don't like going ask for money, but I know it takes money to make things happen. Uh, we've been successful. We do need some things. Uh, we are open to go anywhere in the parish uh, as long as we can help a child. Um, but we do not get any funding from the city nor the parish on any side of the river. Uh, but we do deal with probably a thousand kids a year. In the last five years, we've gotten up to a thousand kids a year with everything that I do across the parish. 
Um, and I'm gonna just help you. So you provide flag football that this recreation does not. You you, you do soccer with this recreation does not. Correct. And golf, which we does not. And you have a thousand kids, and you do it with a on a on a shoestring budget. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Peters. Yes. Make a motion. Adjourn. All in favor, meet adjourn.